Okay, good morning. I, I apologise to those of you who have seen the start of this video before. I just wanted to keep it in context, really. But um, the reason that I'm uploading this as a video is because I had to stop the stream sort of 25 minutes in because uh, the there was an issue with the uh, internet. Um, it seems to be... I couldn't tell. It, it might not have been as bad as it seemed. I couldn't tell. I'd have to have a look um, and check it out uh, now once I've seen... Because I can check the stream now. But... Uh, I couldn't tell if you could actually hear me or not because there was um, it was buffering every five minutes and I could see myself, but I was kind of going, you know, like when um, <laughs> when it was sticking. So I didn't know how much of it you were getting. I thought there's no point of me doing it if there's if if you can't hear. So um, I thought what I'll do is I'll, I'll just redo it. Um, it's unfortunate because I'm going to do another 25 minutes just covering the stuff that we've already covered. Um, but uh, I thought rather than put both streams up, I'll just do one video and then it's done, isn't it? So hello to you who uh, um, who didn't need to know any of that information because you didn't realise. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll just get straight into it. Okay, so um, I did have something to say this morning about um, the fact I was doing something online, but don't worry about it. I'll speak to you about it another time. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> So we're going to talk talking about entrepreneurs um, and enterprise today. A uh, really, really important um, bit of the spec and quite in, a detailed bit of the spec as well. It, it requires, it asks for quite a lot of you. So um, it asks for all these different things. It asks for explain the meaning of enterprise and, and SME. So what are they uh, and how are they important? Uh, explain how satisfying needs and wants give opportunities to entrepreneurs. Um, identify the business um, opportunities. Sorry, identify business opportunities, explain the role of entrepreneurs in creating, setting up and running and developing a business, explain the financial and non-financial motives of an entrepreneur, explain the characteristics and, and skills of an entrepreneur, explain the importance of entrepreneurs and SMEs to the primary, secondary and tertiary sectors of the UK economy, and evaluate the impact of entrepreneurs and SMEs on business and the economy in general. So it, it, they expect a hell of a lot from you, actually, this little bit of the um, thing, but what we do is when we've talked about a few of these different points, a lot of these will be covered by the same thing. So it looks like there's loads, but there's not that much. There is quite a few little bit sections to fill in with the book if you've not already filled it in. Um, so you can do that as we go if, you, if you're missing any bits. But uh, the main important thing to do is understand what the, the premise is of an entrepreneur and how they um, sort of how they are vital to the UK economy. So we're going to get straight into to what we've talked about here. It says uh, key terms, enterprise and SME. So what is enterprise? Well, enterprise, it can be referred to as two different things. Um, enterprise, a business or a, or a company. Um, enterprise uh, is not just the name of a, you know, a starship in Star Trek. Um, it is the willingness to take risk and undertake a new venture and show initiative with a view to gaining rewards. So it's the get up and go enterprise. It's the, it's, it's the core the core facet of an entrepreneur is enterprise it's the you know wanting to do something new and innovative and it doesn't have to be a product it could be a service it could be a you know a new way of doing things um and that's the important thing to remember is that, that there isn't a one size fits all um sort of answer for what is enterprise and what is an entrepreneur because it depends on the type of entrepreneur in terms of what you know it depends on the type of um sort of person in the situation that, that it goes in because you can get entrepreneurs that are very very charismatic and very very um creative and then you can get um ones that are very very uh, quite meek and and quite you know um sort of quiet now it doesn't mean that they're any less of an entrepreneur it just means that they have different entrepreneurial qualities um and that they should specialize in different aspects of uh, that and it doesn't mean that they won't be successful either that's what's brilliant about business it opens itself up to all these new um things and all these it doesn't really segregate against anyone really um for your smes small to medium-sized enterprises characterized by a number of employees and turnover so it says below this is the european commission's um sort of definition of what an sme is and these are i mean they are the ones that we use but people use these these phrases sort of loose um smes just in general they don't go oh has it got less than 250 employees or it's an sme uh, they say they just say oh it's an sme if it's not a massive company so be careful when you when you, when you hear about these on the news and hear about these in in the press when they're talking about smes 
um, they they won't necessarily stick to these absolute definitions. So there's there's three different types of company category. We've got micro companies. They're less than ten employees, less than two million pound turnover. So really really small companies. These might be your you know your corner shops, your local um, butchers, those kind of things, hairdressers. Uh, small to me, uh, small ones. We've got uh, less than fifty employees. You've got less than uh, ten million turnover. These could be uh, more retail shops. You know, like um, more than ten employees. You could have things like um, what could we have for this one? Um, basically, just just your your larger in a, in a way your larger smaller businesses. Um, in the sense that you could still have local businesses. You could have uh, you know places that that employ more people. So you, you're looking at. You know, builders merchants might be a good one for this. Less than fifty employees is probably going to be less than fifty employees working for them. Um, but it depends on the it depends on the situation. That's why it's so difficult to to really give you one. You might be able to tell me more about this than I can tell you if I'm because I'm not really connected to small business like that. And then we've got medium sized business, which is less than two hundred and fifty employees. These are the ones that you'll probably know about if you if you are linked to these. Um, and less than fifty million pound turnover. Um, so. And remember, people are, are loose with the definitions of these and things like that, so they're not always absolutely on. Um, but if you need to remember, if you just remember it's less than 250 employees, less than £50 million pound turnover, really good for when you're doing your definitions in your um, exam questions, really. That is the, that's the important thing to remember. A um, couple of stats for you. 99.2% of all UK businesses are defined as small, i.e. they have between 0 and 49 employees. Um 99.2% of businesses are responsible for 47% of all private sector employment. This is interesting, isn't it? Because that means that you are extremely likely to be involved with a, uh, a small to medium-sized enterprise because 99.2% of all UK businesses are defined as small. However, 99, all those put together only are only responsible for 47%. So that means 53% of the UK economy is made up of 0.8% of businesses. So those larger businesses that are doing more uh, sales, more revenue, more things, so more people being involved. So, you know, if we're talking about BAE Systems, for example, as a large business, they have a hell of a lot of money, they have a hell of a lot of staff, they have a hell of a lot of things that they are to do with, aren't they? And you can see that uh, I always say, because I'm in the Northwest, um, I always think everybody works at BAE Systems. Everybody knows someone who works there because it's a major employer for the area. There isn't, I don't think there's anyone, anyone as big sort of in the area as as BAE in terms of, you know, nat you know, employers um, in the Northwest. Um, there are other ones, but nowhere near as dominant as that. Or maybe it's just because because I know a lot of people who work there. Um, but you, wherever you're watching from, you'll probably have your own one that you go, oh yeah, well it's uh, you know it's Jaguar Land Rover where we are or wherever it is. If you're in Birmingham, then that that might be where it is. Or I know that a lot of them are, are shutting down and laying people off now. So maybe that will change. Maybe this will change a little bit after this whole thing um, fits down. It says surprisingly, the number of people choosing to start up businesses on their own has increased each year from two thousand, despite the recession. And um, and this is a, this is a point about uh, an enterprise in general. It doesn't stop people. It doesn't slow people down. This this coronavirus thing at the minute probably won't stop people from making new businesses. Um, and it's it's a weird one because you think you think you would be, you think you'd stop, but people will be thinking about new opportunities, thinking of um, new new concepts for businesses, new new concepts for um, products which we might not have needed before. Um, but, uh, you know, entrepreneurs at the time think, right, well, what can I do in this situation? Um, what can I do? And you'll you'll see them. People are being entrepreneurial on the news all the time. Have you seen these people who are coming up with, like, 3D printing of uh, face masks for the NHS and stuff like that? You know how I feel about this. The fact that we're having to do that shows the complete lack of funding for the NHS and highlighting how ridiculous the whole situation is when you majorly underfund, you know, uh, public service. We talked about public services the other day. Um, and public goods that aren't supposed to be, uh, you know, <laughs> they're supposed to be, you know, accessible for all. Um, but in this situation, those people are being entrepreneurial. They are being, okay, they're not selling them to anyone, but they, they are being innovative. They are being, um, they've got those entrepreneurial qualities that are showing by making these things, taking, taking the situation. Um, the government estimates that a total number of businesses uh, or business entities increased from 3.5 to 4.9 million between 2000 and 2013. Remember, that was there was a global recession in between that in 2008. So I very, very 
very much doubt that this will see uh, any negativity really to small to medium sized enterprise. Yes, it might make a couple of them fail, um, but that'll be down to cash flow and that'll be down to other things. The government are trying to, to keep that under control. But I could see that on the other side of the coronavirus lockdown thing that we might see the pop up of quite a, a lot of other businesses. Um, which would be interesting, wouldn't it? Because you think it would be a quite a negative thing, but I, I, I think that the, you might see people coming out and doing something, especially when they've had a bit of time on their hands. I mean, I wouldn't have had time to do this if I hadn't have had this lockdown thing. So, you know, I don't know. It's an interesting one, isn't it? Um, so why do you think there are so many small businesses? Well, there's a couple of reasons why there's so many small businesses. And the main um, ones that we, we sort of talk about on the on the spec um, is that the it comes from wanting to be your own boss. So when ever since, like when you were born or when you were going through your life so far, um, especially in the UK, we 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 create this bubble around people and we make people think that if you abide by the rules, the school rules, um, if you abide by the uh, you know do well in your exams and you 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 tick all the boxes. Uh, that you will be what we call successful and that's financially successful as well and uh, th we're not only talking about finance su financially successful but we have a connection between being financially successful and being happy so basically what we're saying to kids is as long as you play by the rules you will be happy eventually and we keep telling them that that's why so many students don't really understand what the hell they're doing or why they're doing things is because they've been they've been promised something um and they, they they don't know why they're going towards it they, they've never re they never agreed to to education themselves um you know it was thrust upon them and, and they've no idea really why they're doing it so i mean maybe i should do a video on the purpose of education and different v v views of it but uh I, I i speak to my students quite a lot about this about the um the importance to know to have that aim to know why you're doing it and and to not to not put up with any of the the crap that goes around that really um so i think when people realize that it's not as simple as oh i got a degree therefore i get a good job um they realize that no i don't want to be doing this okay i've got good qualifications i'm an intelligent person i've got entrepreneurial traits but you know what um i'm not feeling it i don't want to um work for someone else i don't want to abide by a nine to five i don't want to do all these things so there's a big um incentive i think in definitely in western culture to uh to to get off your ass and, and be your own boss because um, although society makes it quite difficult for these people a lot of the time in terms of tax in terms of actual you know expectations on them um because i you know a lot of people say to me why do you yourself not as a business teacher why do you not um become a business person then because, I mean, if you know so much about business, then why aren't you in business? And the answer is because I I value job security. <laughs> you know, what we're talking about motivational factors. Um, I've never found anything that I'm really that bothered about, that I'm willing to risk everything about, you know, willing to risk my house, willing to risk my, potentially risk my marriage, because a lot of uh, successful business people don't have great relationships as well, because they're so focused on the, the actual task at hand. Um have you have you got anything that you would be willing to risk everything for or lose everything for if you needed to would you be able to put your house on the line and stuff like that that's the reason you know maybe i will in the future but i, I don't i've never found anything that i've been so you know maybe i have I'm, I, I i could i'm sure i could do it uh, i understand the premise of it but i like doing this you know like and, and they pay me well and uh i get good holidays and and you know uh, I have job security, so at this moment in time, you think, well, why why would you throw all that in to be your own boss? For me, it's not that important, but I know to other people it is. Um, lack of job job opportunities um, and innovative ideas, they are um, important ones as well. If you've got a really, really good idea of why you want to do something, if you think, yeah, actually, you know what, this is a brilliant idea and I could make loads of money off it, um, or I'd be happier doing it, then maybe you should go with it. Or lack of job, job opportunities. If there's no jobs available to you because of lack of qualifications or lack of anything else, then um, maybe, or, or the fact that you're thinking, well, actually, in this industry, there's not that much opportunities, then maybe it's time to, to go off on your own and do, do other things as well. Okay. Now, there's a couple of, there's three questions, really. So this is the second question. So what factors help SMEs to survive against large firms? How is it then that with when we know that only 0.8% uh, of um, businesses in the UK 
are making 53% of the revenue. How is it then that SMEs um, are able to, to maintain such dominance in terms of the you know, the 99.2% uh, um, was that 99.2%? Yeah, 99.2% um, sort of thing. And uh, and also, how are they able to maintain competition? Well, there's a couple of things. So one of the big things for, we talked about BAE Systems, right? BAE Systems are a massive company. I don't know how many um, people they have worldwide, but definitely thousands, if not tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands. I don't know how many employees they have because they're a worldwide company, but let's say it's tens of thousands, right? So they have tens of thousands of um, uh, of employees. When things change, and although you can have contingency plans in place and stuff like that, it's a hell of a lot more difficult for these people to change what they're doing, to be able to react to situations changing, to be able to react to a lockdown. Imagine if it was a, you know, a um a small little office that has 10 people in it and you need to start working from home then you can sort them out with laptops it wouldn't be that expensive you can sort them out with um you know some uh, sort of conferencing stuff it wouldn't be that difficult to keep keep all the all these sort of um plates spinning if you will you know keep keep all these different things that happening all at the same time whereas imagine if you were someone like BE systems it's not viable it's not sensible i know that um you know, I mentioned them because they they're so dominant in the northwest and stuff like that. But uh, it's how could you physically do it? Tens of thousands of people, and you want them to all be and they're dealing with military secrets. So um, you need to keep it under wraps. You you need to make sure security is is utmost. Um, you haven't you haven't got the the sort of capability the the stuff in place to be able to do things like this, have you? Unless they have. I mean, I'm saying that. Um. I, I they, they they will have continuity. They will have you know contingency plans in place. But I just don't think it's viable really for them to um, expect to do exactly the same that they would have done all the time. Uh, whereas smaller businesses have that brilliant opportunity to be flexible to be able to you know do it instead and 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 sort of seize opportunities when they give them they give themselves. They don't really ever get to um to the point where they have this economies of scale. Um, in terms of purchasing this economies of scale and stuff like that, we're never really small to medium sized businesses. Although there might be the anomalous one that does it, um, they never really get big enough to have uh, communication diseconomies of scale of having so many people all involved. They don't have uh, managerial diseconomies of scale in terms of you know like um, you know too many things happening at once because usually you can keep it under under wraps with there being not as many people. Um, and they, de they never really get purchased in this economy because they're never usually buying in that kind of bulk either. So they, they can kind of avoid that. That gives them a big advantage over uh, bigger companies that need to do things in, in massive bulk and things like that. Um, and one of the big things as well is the lower cost. Uh, they, they, blatantly, they'll have lower cost because they're a smaller business, but they give you mix the lower cost with the other things like giving a personal service, you know, giving a USP of a personal service, being able to give one-on-one -on -one to su one support for for um, bigger businesses and for for other um customers and uh you kind of realize quite quickly that you think well oh, yeah actually um they they're in a really good position here aren't they they're in a a position where they can give give that personal um give that personal approach give that sort of um like one on one um opportunities and one on one sort of um what we're trying to say like one on one um experience the experience i'm trying to say um to use that as a usp that a lot of bigger businesses probably won't be able to do faster communication and stuff so the last one i want to talk about uh, what do what problems do smes face well one of the big ones for them um is that it's difficult to access finance if you um look into how difficult it is for businesses to, to secure finance in general, SMEs always find it the most difficult. And that doesn't matter whether you're a sole trader, a partnership, a, a limited company. Um, limited companies find it easier a lot of the time to to it than, than um, sole traders would only because um, limited companies are seen as a little bit more legitimate because they've had to register with companies else and stuff like that. But on the same respect, because they've got limited liability, is also there's an argument for being harsher on them and not giving them stuff because you know that you're only going to get out of the business um what what they invested into it and you can't sue them personally whereas with a sole trader you could do that um competition from larger competitors is a big one with this is trying to be able to compete with people um on on a large scale is hard isn't it and um with that 
comes all the other things as well of saying well yeah not only do they have the marketing power not only do they have the ability to make these products faster more efficiently do all this stuff but um they also are, are already known in people's minds so you think well yeah it is hard you know imagine trying to come up with a new new uh, sort of um, soda drink like a you know like a fizzy pop and going up against coca-cola you know unless you've got some really you know clever uh, usp that, that they can't compete with or something like that i'm not saying it can't be done but it would be a very very difficult for you to do it i remember one of the big ones was um easy jet founder um tried to do an easy cinema which was supposed to be a you know a new idea of cinema where it was going to be much much cheaper to go to the cinema like he's kind of done with easy jet uh, and he found it was difficult because the uh, the suppliers of the movies wouldn't supply him because it's kind of like a lockdown system. They've got Audion, they've got View, they've got Cineworld, people like that. And it's kind of like a closed thing. Now, that's not legal, and he did sue them. And I'm sure he would actually... I think they found in his favour that he was forcing his... Um, forcing his... Uh, his suppliers to supply him with these movies and that inevitably is why he wasn't successful because you don't want to be in a situation where your suppliers are illegally forced to supply you you're not gonna have a good relationship with them them are you any opportunity for them to screw you over they will do won't they so it's not always as easy to get into industries as you'd expect um so what is an entrepreneur then an entrepreneur is an individual who takes risks create and start a new business or a project they have an idea that they try and make it work they see resources that are available and the possibilities of combining them to provide a product or a service. Create new businesses and provide new products or services. They create and change and challenge the way things are done. Uh, they find new creative, uh, sorry, they, they find and create new markets, generate income and employment and bring around innovation. So they are the backbone of the UK economy. They are the backbone of business in general. They are the, the front runners of why um, people are into this kind of thing like why people are successful in business they have to be entrepreneurial you yourself will be an entrepreneur to an extent you will have entrepreneurial qualities it will just depend on whether you use them effectively or whether you will be successful as an entrepreneur um you know do you see yourself taking opportunities are you doing this now the fact that you're doing this uh, when you don't have to i mean this is the easter holidays i mentioned it the other day um at this current time unless you're watching this weeks after um but this is the easter holidays there is no requirement in terms of from an education point of view for you to be watching this um this is revision for a lot of people as well so you're thinking well that in terms of that that self-dedication that that um dedication to the to the to the craft of learning and things like that and making themselves better and understanding that it's a long game you're investing in yourself now that's an entrepreneurial quality so if you are watching this you are showing entrepreneurial qualities as well by actually doing this um especially if it's not something that you've been specifically requested to do um so it's something to be important of it you know it's a big one um but Someone who can react to situations. I suppose you could say I'm quite entrepreneurial. The fact I'm doing this, you know, like I wasn't specifically asked to do this. I just thought it would be good. And I thought, you know, I'm quite a showman myself anyway. I like being on display. So I like doing this kind of stuff anyway. But um, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to, you know, to try something new. And, and, and hopefully um, it's been useful to you. But that that's quite entrepreneurial in the sense of getting off, off your arse and doing something, you know, like not waiting for anybody to do something for you. You know, there'll be a hell of a lot of teachers out there who'll be saying that they can't do it because they, they don't have the ability or they don't feel comfortable or they don't want to be on camera or blah, 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 blah. There's a million and one reasons not to be entrepreneurial. There's a million and one reasons not to start businesses. And I'm not running this as a business, but you can see my point. Are you one of these people who will sit around and wait for life to happen to you? Are you someone who gets up and does it? Um personally i try and be someone who, who grabs grabs life and tries to to do what i can with it but uh not always you know i can be lazy in that but you know um okay so let's keep going now on this one uh, i'm gonna put these on and this is something i want you to spend a little bit of time on kane's arcade I, I don't know if you've seen this one um but it's a fantastic bit of entrepreneurial um spirit this amazing um it's about a little boy who starts an arcade made out of cardboard um and uh it's about him, even though it, it sounds like a, a ridiculous thing. He's in America and he starts this this um, this this arcade made out of um, cardboard, different things, little games, stuff he's made. Um, and he does it outside of his dad's hardware store, kind of like B and Q and stuff like that. Uh, and people come and put you know tiny bits of money in and stuff like that until one day someone sees it um and uh and goes on twitter and they make this big thing for him and, and that guy um 
has already put himself through college. I think that they said that the money that they've raised that they were gonna they were gonna put him through college with it or something like that in America, you know, university. Um, that's amazing. That guy is a true entrepreneur. Um, and have a look at it. It's called Kane's Arcade. I'll put him in the. I'll I'll link him in the description. They're on there. But amazing. There's two parts to it. One that shows the actual process of what will happen, and then what happens afterwards as well. But amazing. Watch that space for that kid. He's going to go on to do big things. That guy. Um, so, this is a good one. A, a, a typical question would be, how does blah blah Joe Blogs, you know Peter Jones, you know Richard Branson, whoever it is, illustrate the typical characteristics of an entrepreneur? So, what are the typical characteristics of an entrepreneur? Uh, I've got the ones that are on the spec here. Um, so, the first one is innovation. So, if you've got the space, or if you want to write them down, write them down. Okay. So, the first one is innovation. Uh, they've got to be an innovative person. It doesn't have to be innovative in product design. It doesn't have to be innovative in, in a range of things. It just has to be innovative in somewhere, a process or something that the, these people are doing. Uh, a risk taker. They've got to be a risk taker. And this is something that I... Uh, I'm, it's strange. I'm, my personality is all over the place because I, I will take risks and I do like taking risks. I, I, I do things like this, you know, putting yourself on display. You know, I'm in a band. I go out on stage, you know. I've been on stage in front of, like, you know, thousands and thousands of people before. And that doesn't really bother me. Uh, and I will take risks on that. You know, I, I, I will try new things and things like that. However, I won't risk um what i have i'm I'm very risk averse in terms of uh, a lot of things in my life as well and in my income i'm not I'm quite risk averse about doing anything with that my job i'm risk averse in terms of that so although i will try new things um it's more of the more flamboyant things that i like to do and, and you might find something similar to yourself do, do you actually take risks or not are you someone who's quite conservative and keeps themselves to themselves do, do you do laws or or will you get up and go and do something crazy or are you, are you quite spontaneous in terms of that um, determination, um, really important one. So another entrepreneurial characteristic is determination, being determined to succeed. Um, entrepreneurs fail a lot. Um, and it's a natural occurrence. They say, don't they? The Americans say that you have to go bankrupt a couple of times to be a, be a true entrepreneur. Um, and, and I think that is... It's not, it's not the, you know, you shouldn't be wanting to go back, Robs. It's not a good thing. But I think that shows the the major understanding of what entrepreneurs are. The fact that they are willing to do that, get up and go. They are willing to to try and can and fail and, and get up again and fail and get up again. Are, are you determined to succeed? How determined are you? Are you willing to, you know, give everything up? Are you willing to, to, to live in your office? Are you willing to sleep under a desk to, to make your business successful? Um, because that's happened. You know, um, Amazon started from from someone's garage. You know, like um, so did Google. You know, the 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 now some of the most dominant companies in the world. But that that's what happens. You don't have to start with money or anything like that. Um, these people can become successful business people. I'm not talking about massive ones either. You know, successful business people can be. You know, John Smith down the road who has a you know successful um, mechanic. You know, that's an entrepreneur. Of course, they are. You know, they're, they're a determined business person. They're, they're going to come up up against uh, stuff that's difficult for them to to achieve, um, and the, and they, they they pass it and they, and they get through it. And that that's what it's all about. Um, organized, got to be organized. And this is something I know students struggle with. Um, I I struggle a little bit myself. Um, being organized sometimes i think that um entrepreneurs aren't always organized but they, they they usually have a partner then who is organized they usually try and surround themselves with people who have skills that they don't have themselves it's not a bad idea um passionate they've got to be passionate about stuff it's really important i think this is something that you should instill in all parts of your life you know um in you know if you're a teacher it's really important to be passionate about what you're talking about uh, if you don't care, then stop doing it. Because if you don't care, why would your audience care? You know, it doesn't matter whether you're a musician, an artist, a teacher, uh, you know, someone who's putting, um, you know, stacking shelves in Tesco. Be passionate about your job. You know, enjoy it because happiness is what you bring to the party. If you're expecting a job to make you happy, then it's not going to make you happy. But if you bring happiness to the job, if you if you try and look at the opportunities and stop being so negative about stuff, then you might start to enjoy it. Um, that's what I found. I don't think there are good and bad jobs. Um, I think there are more difficult jobs. Um, but I think there are good and bad ways of looking at things. Um, and a lot of the time you just need to, you know, um, stop being so, uh, sort of selfish in that regard and try and enjoy the situation a little bit more. You know, if you're in education now, what an opportunity, you know, oh yeah, well I don't want to be. I'd rather stay at home and play on my Xbox. Of course you would. That's a brilliant thing. But it wouldn't be for ages. I mean, who's getting bored now? 
You know, like, I'm playing on my Xbox. I think it's really good. You know, I've started playing Call of Duty, which is something I've never played before. Um, I've always been very anti-Call of Duty. But I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And I think it's because I'm, I'm playing with my friends. I'm more social at the minute than I've been in ages because I'm having to be. But um, how many of you, like, are starting to get bored with stuff that you're doing? You know, it's fun for a little while. It's fun being 16 for a little while. But come on. You know, like, there's, there's opportunities to do this. People will start missing you know, being at work, I miss it, you know, like, I miss seeing my students, I miss, you know, uh, having the banter with them and stuff like that, and that, that's why this is a, a good thing, but it's, it's put the entrepreneurial traits in, in context, show them, you know, apply them to yourself, because that will, that will show whether you have entrepreneurial qualities, but it'll also help it ingrain it in your mind if you understand what it is, it's a, it's a position, isn't it, as well, the hard-working people, uh, entrepreneurs, they will graft, um, it doesn't matter whether it, and, and you will yourself uh, have these things, you know, it's funny how many people who, uh, they will, they will graft at things which they really care about, which is right, trying to impress a girl or a boy or, you know, trying to impress, you know, someone by going to the gym a lot or whatever it is, they'll really kill themselves trying to, you know, like get a six pack or whatever it is, but then they'll be failing in the studies. And you think you've got it way, way wrong because the determination is there. The entrepreneurial quality is there. They've just got their head screwed on wrong because they're, they're focusing on something which doesn't really matter. You know, yeah, of course, um, you know, your hormones are going to be playing with you and stuff like that. And, and you're going to be in a bit of a weird position when you're, you know, sort of a teenager and things like that. But ultimately, if you could focus more on things which are going to pay a, a bigger dividend in the future than something which is quite small, um and having you know a six pack or something like that which would be great you know i'm not saying it wouldn't <laughs> I, I wish i could i wish i had that but you know um the determination that people show is interesting that they'll focus on things that they want to focus on but not on others as well um passionate creative proactive um again don't they don't have to be every one of these but they're important things that they they could be or would be all right so, second one. Now, it says, explain why Joe, in terms of Peter Jones or whoever it is, that just said Joe Blogs as in anyone, explain, what, explain why uh, might want to become an entrepreneur and discuss the uh, and agree the, uh, the potential reasons for becoming an entrepreneur, categorize them as financial or non-financial. Now, we would have talked about this in class, but we're going to talk about it now. So, why would you want to become an entrepreneur? Then it says more than 3 million people or 12% of the population have already set up a business on their own and a third of people are considering doing so. That was what was said recently. And uh, you might you might have an idea for a business as well. I know a couple of students who um, who have small businesses and are doing quite successful. I always say if anybody makes a million pounds or, you know, hundreds of millions of pounds or whatever it is, becomes a millionaire or off, ha off stuff that I've done to help you. Can you please buy me a yellow Lamborghini? I've always wanted one because um, I think if you're going to get a, if you're going to get a crazy car, it's got to go really flamboyant. I mean, yeah, and pay for my insurance as well because I won't be able to afford it. <laughs> so um, we're going to talk about uh, financial and non-financial things here. So I'm I'm going to um i've got i've got a little box here actually and what i'm going to do is i'm going to i was going to be mean to you and i was going to put it on but what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab it i'm going to delete that and i'm going to pop it in for you like that i'm going to show you because um i don't think it's it's not going to really be that much of an issue i'm going to make those bigger for you and then you're going to be able to see really big I we're going to talk through them all, but it just makes it easier to um, to see, doesn't it? Okay, so financial and non-financial. So if you need them, you can get them down for you. All right. So um, on here, we've got um, a couple of different ones. Making money and profit from, from things. Financial independence to use redundancy money. This is a big one. You know, look at the situation that you're talking about. Uh, has the person been made redundant by, by any chance? Have they... Um, have, have they come into money? They, what about inheritance? Someone has died and left them some money. Uh, you want to do something with that money and, and um, you don't just want to squander it. Uh, it's a really good example of that. It's a really good um, time to become entrepreneurial, time to become uh, a business person. So the, the making money side, even though we don't really... Um, we, we a lot of people in, in the media and that are all about, oh yeah, well, it's not about the money. The money's a side issue. Well, you can't be a successful business person if you don't make money. So even those non-for-profits we talked about yesterday need to make money. Um, so it's all about making revenue, making profit. Um, and that's not, it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, even those people who are multimillionaires, people like Peter Jones and that, he's obsessed with cash. You can see that. He's obsessed with money. And that's what drives him. Even though he's a multimillionaire, um, it's about returns on things and things like that. And he will do things because he's interested in them. He will invest. He has the ability to do that now um, because he's ha he's got the money. But... 
uh, he he does it because it's entertaining to him as well. But with the with that in mind, um, he also like will will spend time you know looking at the financial repercussions of his actions. He doesn't want to invest in stuff that isn't going to make him money. Why does it matter if you've got a million pound? Um, why does it matter to him? Well, it does because it's like it's what drives him. And what about the non-financial ones then? Well, we've mentioned a couple of them already, haven't they? So these are things which you could use in this uh, exam question. We could talk about the financial ones, but also uh, the non-financial ones. Freedom to make your own decisions. Uh, be your own boss. Seeing up a business opportunity. Spotting a gap in the market. And remember what I say. There might be a gap in the market, but is there a market in the gap? Uh, a lot of people think, oh, yeah, it's the first time anybody's thought about this. You'd be surprised. You are not the first person to really think about this. I'm sure if you've come up with an idea, it's been thought of before. And I'm not saying that uh, there isn't true, you know, <laughs> true innovation um, and true, you know, uh, entrepreneurial spirit in terms of, you know, a brand new invention that's never been thought of before. But it's unlikely. It'll be variations on the theme. Usually big business has thought about what you're trying to do. And there will be a reason why they've not done it. Usually because it's not that... Um, not that much money to be made out of it. Realizing there's a capability, um, that might be a realizing the capability in yourself. Um, realize, you know, I play guitar. I want to play guitar all the time. You know, if there's a way of me making money playing guitar, is that something that I can physically do? A lot of people don't do, um, don't go into business. You know, let's say that these creative people, these people who want to be like uh, actors and musicians and stuff like that, they don't want to be actors and musicians because they have a love of the craft. They have a, they, they want to be a musician because they want money. Um, and they want uh, people to, to like clap them and applaud them and they want to be famous so there's easier ways to be famous than being a, being a, a full-time musician you know like people they work hard and you see people like Ed Sheeran and that uh, oh yeah well they're, they're, they're millionaires they must be really happy and they're not you know like they, they've got anxiety or depression lots of people kill themselves there's other things so it's not as simple as that is it if it was as simple as that um, so a lot of people start businesses because they want to do something for themselves and want to be, you know, make them feel feel better, you know, use their abilities a bit more creatively than they do in the normal job. Um, excitement, a desire to create something new and innovative as well. You know, why not do something cool? You know, it would be really cool to work for yourself. It would be really cool to have your own thing. You know, like this. This is my thing. No one can take this away from me. No one can say, oh, well, actually, um, this is blah blah blah. Well, no, no, this is mine. So. You know, Mr. Businessman is my thing. It's not my business, but it's something that I'm I'm passionate about at the minute, isn't it? Because, um, you know, it's a, it's allowing me. So it's a creative outlet for me. It's hopefully it's useful to you. Uh, everyone wins, and to turn a hobby into a business as well. I don't know whether you could do this full time. I very much doubt it. You know, maybe if you get a name for yourself and stuff like that, but. I don't know. Maybe you could. I know there are a couple of people on YouTube who do this. Um, but to turn a hobby into a business, I don't do this as a hobby anyway. I might make videos as a hobby. Can I, can I make videos professionally? I don't know. Um, so, yeah, that, that's what... Um, and I don't want to just apply everything to me, but, you know, it's it, easier in context, I think. So where do business ideas come from then? So we've got a couple of things that uh, I want to talk to you about here. Um, so where do... Where do business ideas come from? Well, there's a couple of them here. I didn't find a gap through personal experience. Trunky, I don't know if you remember Trunky. Trunky is this little um, sort of uh, ride-on um, briefcase, sort of like, um, what do they call them? Like, a, like um, a bag that you'd go on holiday with. I can't remember off the top of my head what they call them. They've got wheels on them and that. Suitcase. Is it a suitcase? Um get a like a suitcase with wheels on that you can a kid can drive around on you know like a, a, and and they took it to dragon's den and they said it was rubbish um and they didn't want to invest in it uh, and it's actually become really successful now and it shows that you know the dragons aren't always right um so that was because they said that kids find it annoying to be stood around in uh, airports and they don't really have loads to do so find them something fun to do with the suitcase things like that clever idea i mean i don't know if i would have invested i don't know if I, you know but it has been quite successful uh, finding a location where a service or good is missing if you live somewhere where you think well actually there isn't one of those around here and, the, and you see this a lot with small businesses where they'll open like an independent game shop or something like that and i have to say they never really last because that that industry itself is is dying um, due to a range of external factors, including people going on to digital and things like that. But you can tell if it's a if it's a uh, 
a passion project you know that you'll find these places that you think oh yeah you know or a little tea room or something and you think yeah it's not commercially viable but you'll have a good time with it while you you know <laughs> while you do it uh, taking advantage of new technology thinking of a way that um to service other businesses consultancy cleaning is there anything that you could do of saying like i said i'm not that organized but uh, well i am organized i'm quite an organized person actually you know but i said that in a business if i wasn't organized then i would um i would employ someone who is organized who do, do to do it for me so maybe you could do that maybe you could be uh, you know a pa for someone and organize the stuff um what about word of mouth or complaints have you heard about stuff that people have been saying oh well this is rubbish i wish we had this um and then you coming up with a way of doing that finding a new way into a customer's needs um what about compare the market in places like that that was brand new wasn't it that was something that hadn't been heard of comparison websites wasn't something that had, had really been done before until they came and really cleaned up with it um and uh it's a an important thing that isn't it in terms of uh, a new innovative thing that you come out with going well what about price comparison what do you mean price comparison i've not used one of those before well it's like you know a website that compares all different websites all right okay so and think about all those different comparisons you've got now you haven't just got it on insurance you've got it on the holidays you've got it on all these different things um i want one where you can just put um i don't know if you if you find one of these if you can put it in the uh, put it in the put it in the comment if you can find me one but um i want one where you can put a product in it and it'll compare all the shops so it's like a massive comparison website um but just for normal stuff so if i want to buy call of duty i want to find out what the cheapest it is i want to put it in and it'll tell me i know there are websites where you can track the price of stuff um whether it's gone up or down or whether it's at a peak or not at the minute but um yeah just just see what see see if you can find me one because i'd be interested in that <laughs> so um what is the role of an entrepreneur in creating and setting up and running this, uh, a business? Um, this is something that we usually do uh, together, but what is it? So creating a business, I'm going to rhyme these off. Um, feel free to, to stop. Uh, I'm not going to talk about all of them, but um, feel free to stop the stop the video and, and, and I will um, you know, rewind it if you need me to go through them. So in terms of creating a business, what kind of stuff do we do? We'll create a business plan. Really important to create a business plan. Uh, that's going to be something that you yourself are going to be had, expected to do um source finance go out and actually finance that business go to banks go and convince people get investors on board um seek advice if you need it you know there's 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 places that you can get advice from government organizations that can help you out uh, prince's trust that kind of stuff that can help you out with uh, business ideas uh, citizen advice if you need it uh, research to market um think of an idea source location and suppliers now remember we're not expecting you to do absolutely everything of these but you're gonna have to do the core ideas of it and understand it even if you've got other people on board what about running a business a couple of things that they do manage staff and monitor them um manage the cash flow remember i don't want to underestimate the importance of cash flow and, and how how dominant it is over a market and how uh you know the dominant it is over a success of a business um order raw materials manage tax uh, manage the accounts tax returns that kind of things when we talked about running the business yes we might have individuals who do this but if we talk about a brand new business then you're going to expect to do this to begin with uh setting up the business we've got recruit staff kit out premises investing in equipment find and attract customers uh sort out business insurance you know don't forget that you need that um and developing a business we've got find new customers look for ways to widen the portfolio and look for methods of expansion um, so there's quite a wide range of those and all went through them quite quickly but if you need them just go back and and, and that i want to talk about um some some different parts of the economy okay so i don't know if you remember these from like geography but we have three different parts of the economy we have uh primary secondary and tertiary bits of the economy and uh on this i've got really itchy nose as well i've always got an itchy nose mate i think it's my mustache i think my mustache tickles my nose um and uh the there are three different types yeah if you remember i don't know if you did these at, at school and that but we have primary secondary and tertiary now primary sector is anything that comes out of the earth okay so it's it's basically the uh, the company that are getting things out of the earth so fishing farming mining forestry uh, that kind of stuff it is all primary sector um so it's um so it's extraction of raw materials um secondaries where you manufacture or transform the raw materials into something so on here we've got um the uh, orange that goes on to you know is it tropicana's factory there that become um tropicana drink and then um 
once we've done that, we then take it to the tertiary sector, which is the service sector, which would sell it. So your supermarkets and that kind of stuff. So you've got your original suppliers of your raw materials in your ter in your primary market that sell to your um, secondary market, which actually manufacture it into something, um, and then straight through to your um, your tertiary sector. Now in the UK, we're mainly tertiary. We have a very few. Uh, secondary and primary we do have you know we do have some farming we do have some forestry we do have some fishing um we do have some manufacturing but the main um, focus of our economy it used to be used to be different used to have a hell of a lot of manufacturing in this country but we're mainly tertiary now we mainly do services we're good at doing stuff like that insurance law um customer service you know um retail that kind of stuff we're, we're a lot more like dominant in than, than the other ones anymore so um Again, we've got this little thing on here. I hate it with stuff like this. This is, as I said, this is one of the problems of, uh, you know, having a um, having the PowerPoint set up the way we do. So let's have a look at these uh, just really, really quickly. You can stop the video, have a go with these, and then I'm going to um, go through them. So you feel free to stop it now. Right, I'll assume you've stopped it, and now you're back with me. Hello, welcome back. Um, and uh, let's have a look at these. So um, direct. Uh, basically which ones of these are primary secondary and tertiary now so primary line uh, sorry primary line direct line insurance what is it is it primary secondary tertiary well it's a service isn't it so it's tertiary forestry is primary coal mining is primary um computer assembly with well, manufacturing isn't it so it's secondary uh travel agent is tertiary because it is a service uh, a brewery a brewery is secondary because it's actually you know a physical thing it's not doing anything uh, bmw car showroom is tertiary warburton's bakery is uh secondary yeah secondary uh next uh tertiary bt um is tertiary because it's a service holiday inn tertiary uh carpet makers secondary dulux paint manufacturer uh, secondary and then finally your pear tree farm farming is getting that raw materials they're going to be primary aren't they so just a quick one through i mean there's not loads to talk about but it's just an important thing to to get isn't there so importance to the economy here we're coming up to the end now we're, we're nearly done so thank you very much for staying sticking with me of these uh, crazy uh, <laughs> um technical issues that we've had today uh, but this is what happens isn't it and we get through it because we're determined and we're uh, entrepreneurial and uh so the, the importance to the UK economy, what are the benefits to the government of the new businesses set up in the UK? The big one, remember, what do this? What does this stakeholder group want? The government, they want uh, people to provide uh, tax and they also want to provide people with uh, jobs, job security. So let's have a look whether they actually do that. And it says reduce unemployment, brilliant. That's exactly what they want. Increase tax revenue, fantastic. It's what they want. Creates competition leading to innovation and choice. This is one that we haven't really talked about in terms of why the government wants it. It's more um, just to develop a, a cohesive and uh, sort of usable um, sort of economy, really. that We like competition. It's really important. Everyone thinks that, you know, having one or two big companies in that industry is good, but it isn't. You know, uh, Apple being so dominant isn't good for the industry in general because it stops people competing. So uh, we need people like Samsung, we need people like Huawei, we need people like LG to come in and try and disrupt that that organisation because if everybody just uses Apple products, then there's no competition and they'll just put the prices up like they always do and make the quality go down, which arguably uh, a lot of Apple products in the last couple of years have been substandard. Um, for example, some of the issues that they've had with the keyboards on the MacBook Pros and things like that, it's a widely known thing. Uh, bend gear, you know, when the, the phones were baking. I don't want to get into a massive thing, but it's, a, it's an important one, isn't it? So when we talk about this, um, the importance, we know that stakeholder groups are really important for our uh, stakeholder question that's going to come up in the exam. Um, and stakeholder groups in this one, the, the government want to the tax and they want that. And, and this, this definitely helps out on those. So in summary, um, business activities have a major impact on our lives, both as consumers, employees, businesses are in every sector as the economy. In the primary sector, providing the food that we have, farming, uh, supplying power that we use from mining or extracting oil from the North Sea. In the secondary sector, private enterprises provide us with a massive amount of consumer goods, manufacturing cars, processing food, making clothes, designing and producing consumer electronics. In fact, all the goods that surround us in shops we visit that help satisfy what they want, uh, everyone. Remember, they're not necessarily from our secondary things. 
mentioned, though, we're not necessarily talking about our economy because we're mainly tertiary. But the tertiary service sector, private companies provide gyms, offering financial services, offering fleets of buses and trucks, prepare marketing campaigns and so much more. And that is something that we really are good at in the UK. Um, just a couple of little bits for you at the end as well. There are 5 million separate businesses uh, employing a total of 24 million people. Um, 3.3 million are sole proprietors like sole traders and just individuals who own all the business. Uh, there are around 500,000 businesses that are partnerships. There's 1.2 million registered limited companies. Uh, SMEs uh, employ around 14.4 million people in the combined turnover of 1.6 uh, 1. billion. I don't think it's um, 1,600 billion. I think that's 1.6 because that would be, is that trillions? I don't know. I don't think they do that much. Um, government support is offered to all small businesses providing access to advice and useful information, funding such as grants, legal protection for new ideas, grants for some of the purposes. And this is, uh, if you want to ever um, get a, a grant for anything or any um, a business up and running and things like that, the what you will find is the... The government will give you grants depending on if you are doing something that they particularly want you to do. They're focused on something that they want. So if they are looking at job creation, if your if your business is something to do with job creation in terms of not just physically doing that, but if you come up with a way of you know providing more and more jobs, then they're going to fund you. They're going to go oh, okay. Or if it's like in if they're particularly trying to um, increase. Uh, clean energy then you go okay well yeah i, I have done uh, clean energy and that's the uh, you know i've got this idea and, and it's going to be really really revolutionary and stuff like that then they're likely to fund you because you, you're helping the government do something that they're particularly interested in one another one that i would like you to have a look at uh, is kirsty henshaw kirsty henshaw if i remember rightly was a uclan uh, student university of central lancashire student she came up with an idea for a um a ice cream that had very very little in it and they she sort of was one of the pioneers of the free from stuff um and she went on dragon's den and she got an investment and she's doing really really well um and this is just uh, you know as i said we're from the northwest so we we, we want to sort of champion people who are doing well and things like this i feel like i'm gonna sneeze um i think, I think there's a bit of dust that cat's probably knocked dust up um and um yeah, we should champion these people. She's a fantastic example of someone who, who does well. So I'll put another link in the description. You can have a look at them. So don't forget to have a look at uh, the other ones I mentioned before, Keynes Arcade as well. And that, ladies and gents, brings us uh, mainly to the end of this um, weird uh, one that we've done today because <laughs> uh, I've had an inability to stream properly. But at least I'll be able to get this back up to you and I'll be back on at 10 o'clock tomorrow um so i'm not going to let you uh, miss out on looking at the news now because we are living in crazy times and it's so important that we have a look at what's happening so let's have a look at the news there we are there he is uh boris johnson uh, still in intensive care at the moment um i don't want to get into the whole clapping boris thing i think this is ridiculous i think there's so many more people who are not more important, but, you know, he's a human, as I said, and, and, and whether you love him or hate him, he's still the Prime Minister and things like that, but it doesn't mean, um, like, the... The difficulty here is it's not that... I, I don't like the guy anyway, but I don't wish him any harm, uh, but th there's a big difference between, you know, clapping public servants people who are doing really important things saving the world essentially here and then some guy who you know says ridiculous things on tv and insults a lot of people and then oh yeah well let's all clap him no let's not clap him as i said i, I don't wish him any harm but there's a difference between you know people who are on the front lines and this guy here interestingly enough he's being um <laughs> he's being trapped by an nhs place <laughs> i bet he's worried now <laughs> uh, but anyway yeah uh, it's crazy. I'll keep you updated on terms of this. I'm sure we'll get back back to fighting fitness and soon, and and you know keep keep on it and that. But uh, yeah, crazy that he's actually you know maybe they should be putting a little bit more money into the things which are actually saving the world at this moment, isn't it? Um, it says here. Let's have a look at this one. So, um, more than nine million expected to be furloughed. Uh, more than 9 million workers are expected to be furloughed under the government's job retention scheme. This is according to analysis by the Revolution Foundation, Resolution Foundation using the latest figures on take-up for the scheme in the British Chamber of Commerce. The cost of the taxpayer for three months is estimated at 30, 30 to 40 billion. Wow, this is, this, is, this is significant. 30 to 40 billion. And the hard thing with that 
is do you remember how much the government was talking about the 320 360 million that we pay the eu is it really coming to context for people now how little that is how important it is to look at the context of the situation and actually look at what we're getting for our money it's crazy we're, we're living in a crazy time and interestingly enough i don't know if you've seen it but the um the eu have just decided to give us like 40 billion as well to help us out with stuff <laughs> which is absolutely crazy we're living in these crazy crazy time employees can be put on foil or a leave of advent, uh, absence and firms can keep paying them but 80 percent of their wages must be reimbursed by a grant uh, by the government the treasury has promised companies the scheme will be ready by the end of the month um the cost to the government on these figures will be 30 to 40 billion over three months uh, roughly similar to the amount the government spends each year on police and safety wow so the full budget for the police and we're going to do that in a month goodness me this is serious isn't it we, we don't want to underestimate this one interesting this one uh, tesco tells people to visit stores to get food tesco has said that there's uh, most food will still need to be purchased in store amid the coronavirus pandemic the supermarket giant said it wasn't able to meet demand as more shoppers stay home despite the fact that it's increased its online grocery shop shopping capacity by more than 20 percent it said the first weeks of the virus there was sig significant pain panic buying with sales up most uh, up almost a third tesco said that it's now subs subsidized with food stocks returning to normal so it's subsided so people are stopping panicking as much and getting used to being able to still get stuff between 85 percent and 95 percent of all food bought will require a visit to store and here significant changes in the store environment have been implemented i have to say this is good things yeah companies are taking it on now i think they were um, uh we're forgetting it i mean sainsbury's i have to have a go at sainsbury's that they're still not doing anything like not doing enough like there's still way loads of people i mean morrison's i have to say for them they've been really good they've been stopping people coming into shops they're keeping it to like 10 people um in sainsbury's you loads of people walking around you know and, and they have people they have like things outside to say oh can you stand you know six meters apart or whatever it is but it's crazy isn't it in terms of like is it really that are you really doing enough here let's have a look at the business world what's happening in business um what's this lady saying um the money isn't coming in quickly enough just a little bit back to um you know cash flow issues dw fitness first the 120 gyms across the country has closed all due to coronavirus lockdown because of the closures the company has stopped charging membership fees which means it has no money coming in the boss of the chain martin long says the firm's income normally totals about 15 million pound a month and that's gone to zero this means we won't have the money to fund the, the three million pound monthly wage bill and that's due at the end of april um so that means that they must have no money in the bank then or very little money in the bank and remember even if the company has assets it's not like you can liquidize them you need them you want to be able to open the gyms back up when you want um workers beg holland and barrett's bosses to shut shops investors warned about rushing into leisure stocks this is an interesting one because you know is it worth buying up stocks now because they're so low investors have been warned about piling money into travel and leisure sectors as their recent surge um Travel and leisure stocks, including airlines and cinema change, have been hit hard by the coronavirus. While their valuations have plummeted across the board, some stocks have seen their share prices rocket. Um, in Tuesday, cinema change Cineworld shot up almost 50%, while cruise, rate, um, cruise ship operator Carnival um, surged more than 20%. Cineworld, the, world, the, the world's second biggest cinema chain, announced bosses had been waived salaries and bonuses as part of a survival plan. Admitting the current situation was extremely challenging, and Cineworld said that it had been scrapped to plan dividends of stakeholders, uh, to shareholders, sorry. But its share price shot up more than 49% on the London Stock Exchange despite its bleak outlook with more than 780 cinemas closed. Why is that? I'll tell you why it is. Because people have seen an opportunity that because they, they, they probably will go back up and they've, they've thought, right, let's buy up some stock now while it's so cheap. Um, you've got to be careful though because uh, it says... Um, yeah, it says... Uh, given the dire outlook for the industry, experts are warning investors of uh, tread carefully when thinking these stocks have bottomed out and may be staging a recovery. Um, this is an interesting one, isn't it? And this is a problem you're always going to have when you're investing in stuff. My, my brother has invested in stuff at the minute and it's up and down every day. He said it, one day he's like up 100 quid, uh, one day he's like down 50 quid, one day he's up, it's just up and down, up and down. Let's let's look at one last one um, before we finish. Um, let's look at this one. This, this looks... Uh, uh, a happy one um drones in africa could they become lifesavers it says death becomes uh, death comes fast as we sit in the scorching sunshine of rwanda's capital uh is it kigal um she's talking about the post 
Patrum hemorrhage. Oh, women bleeding after childbirth. I'm always amazed that more attention isn't paid for this. It's the biggest cause of death in childbirth. Interesting. Um, usually the blood is transported by roads or a boat, but in Ethiopia, some is moved by drone. So it's saying that maybe um, to save people's life, um, we could um, transport. This is a good thing. Maybe we should be doing this in the UK if we have trans that could go far enough. But, you know, like we have those people who, who go on motorbikes, don't we, who um, go from one place to another trying to, to, to get uh, blood from from place to place. Um, maybe we could do that by drone. That's not a bad idea, actually, isn't it? Hmm. Something to think about. Okay, ladies and gents, we're just approaching an hour, and um, I think we've done we've done enough for today, haven't we? Um, it is now uh, much later on than than usual for me because usually I'd finish the stream and um, be be off doing whatever I do uh, afterwards. But um, the yeah, we had a bit of a problem with technical issues today. Apologies about that. I just thought it would be more sensible to get the actual content ended rather than being live. Um, it's not like we do loads of interactive stuff anyway, but I prefer to be live. I prefer to get it down and, and you can see it live and stuff like that. On the off chance, people like to have a little bit of uh, asking questions and things like that. Uh, remember, if you do want to ask any questions, if you've got anything to talk to me about, you know, please message me on YouTube. You know, send me a, a message if you are in my class. You, you know how to get in touch with me and things like that. Um, but uh, I will be back on at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning hopefully with a bit of a better internet connection and uh, i will see you all then peace